Thank you, Pichipung, for not only shining your special light on us, but for transforming it into fireworks. Thank you. I did promise you an upside down program today, so we did have a bit of that, but now everything's back to normal. At this point of our program, I was going to introduce to you Foreign Affairs Minister Bert Kunders. Minister Kunders is a good friend of the funds, but the danger with foreign affairs ministers is that they can be called abroad on very short notice. That's what happened today. Um, fortunately, we have another friend in the ministry, Foreign Trade and Development Minister Lillian Pluman, who was planning to come and enjoy the ceremony this afternoon, but instead she's been put to work. So she kindly offered to prepare a speech and step in for Bert Kunders at the last minute. Following Minister Kunder, uh, Pluman's uh, speech, we will be presenting, hopefully, the work of our five other laureates in a short film that will work this time. But first, with special thanks and great pleasure, please let me call Her Excellency Lillian Pluman. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, dear laureates, ladies and gentlemen, but above all, friends. Witste nog Kumpel. This was a pop album in 1976 by a group called Carbo. It contained songs about Kumpel Zheng and his comrades. It was about Boutere and about the Blech. I'm sure I lost the English-speaking members of the audience. But to them, I'd like to say, do not worry, because the Dutch in the audience hardly understood a word either. Because words like boete and the blech aren't Dutch words. They're words from the southern part of the country, the province Limburg, that I am from. And interestingly enough, most people from Limburg would not know those words either because they are so peculiar to the inhabitants of the mining region around Heerlen, in the east of the province. In fact, let me confess, even I had to look them up. You might think of the Netherlands as a very small country, but I am from the western part of that small province in that small country, and I can tell you east and west are very different. So, a translation is in order for everyone. Boete was the accepted term for having your lunch underground, deep in the mines. The blech was a flask that held the coffee. Such words were almost a language in themselves, and they provided enough material for a double album, Witste nog Kumpel, Do You Remember Miner? For well over a century, mining was by far the most important industry in Limburg. Coal miners were macho role models, modern day heroes, celebrated for keeping the country warm. And then natural gas was discovered. The price of coal plummeted by 1970 and all the mines were closed. Buildings were erected over the mines and within a few years, hardly a trace was left. Many mine workers had to take jobs in factories, but they felt bereft of their identity, their source of pride, their way of life. They even felt bereft of their language. Not many of them would have considered themselves as culture-sensitive people. But when this album, Witste nog Kumpel, came out, they all went and bought it, and many tears were shed. It reminded them of who they were and where they came from. It restored their sense of self. And my point is this. Culture defines us. Language defines us. Our traditions, our habits define us. This year, the Prince Claus Fund Jury awarded a prize to my newfound friend, a Lebanese cook. And why not? After all, also food defines us. 
and I would applaud the jury's decision. It shows that you promote, protect, and preserve culture in the broadest sense. And you've been doing that for more than 20 years now, and I salute you for it. At the same time, you have by no means discarded culture in the more traditional sense of the word. In fact, one of your greatest achievements was your role in rescuing Mali's ancient Timbuktu manuscripts. Many of you might know the story, but let me tell it here. In 2012, the Prince Claus Fund got word through its network in Timbuktu that militants were planning to destroy the world-famous manuscripts. A secret operation was funded together with Dune Foundation and others. And by the time the militants arrived in Timbuktu um, to carry out their threat, most of the documents had already left the country and were smuggled into safety. Now, manuscripts are only paper, you might say. Hundreds of people of Mali thought otherwise. They made the rescue possible, often at a huge personal risk. But they thought it was worth it because the manuscripts in Arabic and local languages represented knowledge. They, to the people of Mali, are a physical proof of a time going back to the 10th century when Timbuktu was an African center of trade, learning, and civilization, a great source of pride to the people of Mali, and something worth risking your life for. Of course, what we value most also makes us most vulnerable. Predators can sniff out vulnerability. So it's hardly surprising that the likes of Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and Daesh target culture. They targeted the Buddhas of Bamiyan in 2001. They tried to target Timbuktu in 2012, and they are still targeting it in Palmyra and other places. Culture is under siege in many other ways. The space for culture is shrinking. Artists are becoming isolated. Freedom of expression is being restricted. And diversity is being threatened by intolerance and distrust. Violence and the fast pace of change are uprooting people both physically as well as psychologically. While some have grown insecure about their identity, others have had to literally leave everything behind, their house, their community, their homeland, their food. They've seen their whole social fabric unravel and their history disappear before their own eyes. And they run the risk of losing themselves completely so if ever there was a need for Prince Klaus Fund, it is now. And if ever there was a need for people like you, laureates, it is now. Because you envision, you embody the achievements that Prince Klaus envisioned when he accepted the gift from the people of the Netherlands, a fund that would further his ideals. Ideals that were summarized by Professor Anke Niehoff, the first chair of the Funds Board in 2002. She said, respect for people's own ideas, their ideals and creativity, and the conviction that human agency can overcome adversity, discrimination, and deprivation. I hope the Fund will continue to safeguard that legacy. I hope the award laureates, past, present, and future, will continue to tell the stories, will continue to preserve the identities of those who need it most. We all need our own story, wherever we are. Thank you.